Joining us via phone today is the band Dishwalla. Welcome to mp3.com. Hey, hey there. Thank you. And um, you can find their mp3.com page at mp3.com slash dishwalla, and that's spelled D-I-S-H-W-A-L-L-A. Also, their homepage is located at www.dishwalla.com. Um, I like to start out the interviews just reading a little bit of an artist description, uh, a little bit about what you're doing, where you've been, and um, just catch people up to speed with what you're doing. So um, basically, I got this from your mp3.com page, and it reads, this Santa Barbara rock band, well known for the smash single, Counting Blue Cars, or Tell Me All Your Thoughts on God. They consistently demonstrate a unique ability to write music that elevates the personal to the universal. Their signature sound is a swirling blend of softly curved melodies and resonating guitars and yields a provocative and unique mix of pop savvy and soulful rock grind. That's a pretty uh, complex description there. Wow, yeah, it is. <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing. I had no idea. <laughs> Did you know you were so intricate and complex? <laughs> no, not exactly in those words, no. Um, so we have J.R. Richards uh, as the lead singer, songwriter, frontman, right? Yep. Rodney Browning on uh, guitar and vocals. Scott Alexander on bass and vocals. Jim Wood on uh, keyboards and vocals. And Pete Maloney on drums. So um, who's with us today? Who's joining us today? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is, um, yeah, we got J.R., lead singer. Okay. This, uh, Scott Alexander, play bass. Okay. Pete Maloney, drummer. Very good. Very good. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I guess I want to get started to ask you about your transition and you're now indie artists, um, basically on a on a not a ma not a major label like doing the indie thing on Emergent um, with your new CD Opaline. How did you make that transition from being a major label artist to being an indie artist? Um, well, you know, really, I, I think um, uh, we were on A and M to begin with, and we, be we ended up being part of this big corporate merger, and I think. Uh, you know, um, the main reason that we're on the independent is to kind of get out. We wanted to get out of that situation of being back stuck in a big uh, potential merger situation or restructuring of a company that most of the major labels are going through right now. Right. Is this JR talking? It is. Cool. Um, and you've been promoting Opaline since, did it come out in April, I believe? Yep, came out end of April. Okay. Have you been supporting it with a tour, doing interviews? What's your promo strategy been today? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a little of everything, you know, um, yeah, a lot of performances, uh, live, you know, any TV things, things like that, a lot of interviews, um, you know, we'll be touring as long as the record is, is, is doing well, we'll continue to tour at least, you know, through the end of the year, no longer. Very nice, very cool. I know you have um, a video that you're showing up at uh, dishwalla.com and uh, kind of working on getting that in rotation and that kind of thing. Have you noticed any sort of uh, difference in being uh, on an indie label as opposed to, uh, you, you did have that one, you know, chart topping hit, Counting Blue Cars. Do you feel any differently kind of going this different path? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, for a lot of reasons, really. But, I mean, artistically speaking, I mean, we really got to make the record that we wanted to make on this label. And, had we had gone into another situation where we were on a major label, it just there's no way they would have, you know, the amount of time that we put into the songwriting and the amount of work that it took to um, make this record, we wouldn't have been able to do that um, in a situation on a major label. And then also, you know, it's just a much smaller, you know, everybody's just got to work their asses off here. It's a much smaller team. Everybody's got to work a lot harder um, to accomplish what we want to do. Right, but I imagine your sense of accomplishment is that much better. Um, yeah, because, you know, we're doing it on our own terms. I got a chance to listen to some of your music from Opaline, and it seems like to me your sound is a little bit more um, subdued in a sense, like maybe more subtle uh, songwriting. Am I kind of on the same page? Like, do you, I, it just seems to come across a little bit, a little bit more soft, a little bit more intricate than some of your earlier work. Maybe a little bit. I, mean, take the, I was just going to say, um, this is Pete. <laughs> Uh, we just pretty much set out to just write the best songs we could. We didn't really have an agenda with the format for how we were writing or what type of uh, sound we wanted. We just set out to write the best possible possible material that uh, that reflected our career and our time at this this point. 
So there wasn't really any sort of plan for it to be um, subdued or subtle or softer. It just was that's kind of a vibe that comes out of it. But initially, we just wanted to write the best possible material, and that's what came out from that batch of songs. Very cool. And how does your songwriting process unfold? Do, does the band kind of offer up different pieces, or is it does it kind of go from JR downward, or how does that work for you? It varies. You know, we, we try to try to leave like every possibility open. Um, you know, whether it's uh, all of us playing together in a room, or, or somebody coming out with a, an idea completely on their own. You know, just so we don't limit any possibility of a good song happening. Very cool. Um, as as we kind of mentioned briefly before we started this interview, you had you had played a gig at um, Ground Zero at St. Paul's Cathedral. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. How did how did you who asked you to do that? Um, when did you do that? And and how was how was that for you performing there? What was your feeling going into it? Um, well, it was it was a few weeks ago. It's first it was the first time that we had been in New York City since nine eleven. Um, and uh, uh, the guy who uh, arranged the strings on our record, uh, Ralph Ferris, he um, basically spends most of his time doing uh, arranging and doing strings in New York City. So he had called us ahead of time and knew we were coming into town and said, hey, you know, would you be interested in playing? They have this very intimate thing that happens down at St. Paul's Cathedral, um, which is, you know, close to the public, so it's only available to, to anybody who's working down at Ground Zero, the firemen, the policemen, the construction workers. So, um, you know, it was, it was a really heavy emotional thing to do, you know, um, and I didn't even realize it. I don't think really any of us realized how, how uh, heavy it was until you actually get down there and you really feel, you know, the, the deep emotional... Um, reaction and the people and just the environment and just being in that church with uh, the people that had been there and dealt with it that day. So, I mean, it was like a it was a it was a really heavy thing, but it was a beautiful thing at the same time. Were you guys playing um, solo? Were, were there was there a bunch of people on the bill or? No, it was solo. Mm -hmm. No, it was just uh, a couple of acoustic guitars and and, uh, and a string quartet. Is that available anywhere, or was that a live? Uh, just uh, it was a, a one-time time? only thing. Yeah. It's so interesting how different people have different perspectives and, and different stories all related to that one area, that one relatively small geographic area. Yeah, well, it affected so many people, you know, and a few degrees of separation and so many other people are affected, you know. Um, you're right, you're right. Do you feel, um, not to dwell on this, this event, but it's uh, it's come up as a subject today. I'm kind of curious. Do you feel, um, Jr. or any of the guys, that that event has colored or shaped your songwriting or your philosophies as as artists? Has it sort of shifted your goals or your objectives or made you that much more resolved just to do what you do? Like, how do you think that has affected you guys individually? That Good question. Time? I mean, it, it's one of those things that I think that um, I don't know. I mean. As artists, I mean, certainly you, you're, you're uh, influenced and, and motivated by a lot of things that you experience, so you, you never know. It may certainly influence us down the line, but uh, that kind of stuff takes time. I, I mean, immediately, though, I know it certainly affected us as, um, as far as taking account as to what really happened. By being there that day, it really made a big difference. You know, it's different than watching it on TV. Right. You know? I, I imagine um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, as... It's just my perception, but I f feel like your songs are quite soft. And I notice when you go to www.dishwalla.com, there's a girl there who looks actually quite angelic. But if you kind of camp out on the graphic for a while, she seems a bit like there's a sort of a haunting element to her, sort of a small, dark element about her. And it's interesting because I, um, you know, I apologize, but I keep going back to that sort of that song that sort of earmarked you in the pop canon, right? Counting Blue Cars it talks about God. It talks about spirituality. And it seems like even though your music has a, a rather uplifting feeling, very well crafted, you know, well produced, there is that edge of thoughtfulness of, you know, maybe a little bit of a darkness there. And I'm wondering what your influences are to kind of, it seems like that's the foundation of some of your the way that you do your art but it doesn't really come across in your song that your songs have like a three dimensions to them in my opinion but maybe colored by some of that you know that that shadow side of life 
So I'm, I'm wondering kind of what your songwriting influences are and, you know, how you pick your art, you know, how, what drives you, what sort of elements in, in artistry drive you as artists? I know. I was terrific. <laughs> yeah, we'll begin to try to answer that. I mean, it's interesting because I know you know all of us are influenced by different things, and and you know it's definitely the the sum of all those influences and all you know the five guys in the band that that um, makes up what ends up becoming the songs. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, definitely the record definitely has a a kind of like dark, ominous thing to it. I mean, you know, we, instead of really trying to get into making this really heavy sounding record, which we could have done, right? Um, you know, we tried to make it heavy on a, more, on a much more emotional side, too, and, and at the same time, really, and, and have some positive aspects of it, too. We didn't want to make this really negative record, which it isn't at all. Because um, I know for us, you know, the past few years, is, we've kind of gone through a healing process of trying to get our, basically, our shit back together and, mm -hmm. and remember how to write songs again. And um, So... I don't know. I mean, I know that, you know, like, I, I used to, I grew up listening to stuff that was real dark, you know, a lot of, like, 80s, you know, dark techno stuff, like Depeche Mode, and, mm. and you know, nah, you know, all kinds of random stuff like that, but, uh, so I've always kind of had a, a soft spot for those kind of things, something that's just a little on the dark side, is it was kind of been a cool combination for me, but, you know, we, we write pop songs for the most part. Pop songs with maybe a dark edge to them? Dark influence to them. Oh, if you just look at the the back cover of our record, man. We look like <laughs> this Italian mafia band. You know, like we're ready to kill you. <laughs> what is the significance of Opaline? What is um, what's the title about? Um, the title is is, is uh, just a way to kind of describe the album. You know, Opaline is a is a way to describe a color of an opal. It's and because there's so there's so many variations in it, and we always try to make records that have. Uh, a really big variety in them, so you don't get, you know, a good record. I mean, back, like, the records I used to make back in the day, you know, where it was, like, from track one to, to the, the last track was, was uh, you know, kept your interest. It didn't, nothing sounded the same for the most part, you know. There was usually maybe common threads throughout of it, but uh, there was, the records were diverse, and they kept your attention, and it was about making a record, not about singles. So you're trying to make it more of a, more of an experience, more of a, something that people would play oh, yeah. all, all the time, rather than Catching a you know this is our radio hit. It's like they're all radio friendly. They're all yeah, listening friendly. exactly. I mean, you know, so many records these days are, are like that, and that's you know that's their thing. But I know you know so much of us, not really what we listen to, and and it is really about creating a whole experience. You know, from from song one to to song song eleven. You don't want the record to live and die by just one song. You right. know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole body of work. So. It's, uh, it's easy to get pig like JR was saying, easy to get pigeonholed into the trying to get the single on radio and push on radio. And while that's hugely important, you want the person that listens to the record um, to be the same person that comes to the show and knows the whole breadth of the material. So it's from start to finish, they are taken on a journey, and it's not just one stop in the journey. So you're you're on a tour now supporting Opaline. Um, when are you going to get back in the studio and, you know, kind of take us through what your tra trajectory is, will be for the, like the next year? Because you're kind of on a different track now that you're indie. It seems like you can kind of take more time. Yeah. Our, our mind is so focused on, you know, the, you know, what's going on in front of us right now, which is really just, just being on the road and, uh, and performing for as many people as we possibly can, you know. So we're, we're going to be in the States for, you know, quite a while and then, Looking like Australia this fall, and you know who knows Europe maybe beginning beginning of next year or something. So you know it's just going to be a lot of touring for us and a lot of working. It sounds like you love it though, which is quite a blessing. You have to. Mm -hmm. You drive yourself crazy, man. You have to. It is, it is a lot of work, and there's certainly you know like every job, there's always some unique sacrifice that you have to give, and and you know certainly being away from home and and uh, you know any any families and friends and stuff like that is really tough. So um, you know. Certainly, you know, for us, especially now, we really try to focus on playing, playing for people, and uh, and because that is definitely for me, and I think for most of these guys, is, is the the key and the best part of it. I think is really performing for people. Very cool. Very cool. Um. So, is there anything that you you know would want to share with your fans, or perhaps new fans, about you know 
your music, or is there any any kind of message that you wanted to get out there to people? Well, you know, I know there's one thing. Um, you know, we released a, a DVD uh, simultaneously with the record, mm-hmm. um, which I think is a you know another cool way to kind of um, get an idea of what the whole record is about because it really kind of lets you in on uh, beyond just the songs. It kind of lets you in on on what it took to make the record, and there's a lot you know a lot of visual things that are going on there too. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's a cool way to experience the record beyond just the, uh, the you know two track stereo thing. Can they uh, they can get that at dishwalla.com? dot com? Um, they can at least find out where it is. Cool. That's, yeah, because I mean it should be available at just about any store too, along with uh, the record. The regular yeah, record. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us. Um, Absolutely. I I definitely hope that you keep uploading more stuff to your page. And um, thanks very much. Please keep in touch with us. All righty. All right. Very much appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye.